What's going on guys? It's Toby here and I'm with Gyno. Bro. <laughs> and today we're gonna be installing a shift light on Sally. So in order to actually use it, we're gonna have to put on the bead locks or else I have to stay in third gear and we're gonna slap them on real quick. Oh yes sir. <laughs> I forgot what they look like. Need help mounting it? You got it. <laughs> we're installing the shift light. And we're so, just trying to hide it right now, so we ran it through it the A-pillar. It's ran through the A-pillar. You can see that right here. Wire comes all the way down. And now we're just pulling off this. This comes off really easily. I don't really have to worry about that. Then you can pull this off too. This one's gonna be harder. Do you need to pull that? Because I just wanted you, you to pull this. You just wanted to pull it, like, put it behind it. I wanted you to pull this bit off. But honestly, we could probably Actually, run it through that. Yeah, that's all go. I was saying. It's getting caught on something. Oh, there probably you go. the trim. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's all off. Now we can hide it and go to the OBD port. Perfect. Alright. Just go in like that. I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna record this real quick. And now the wire is completely hidden to the shift light. I also give you this mounting plate, so I'm gonna use it. Usually they recommend putting it on the dash, but I don't want to because it's gonna blind me. So I might put it like here or something like that. I don't know something angled like this. I'm gonna use their provided uh, mount thing. Probably put it like this. So that's perfect. Like just angle it up because if you have it shining right at you, you'll blind yourself. Yeah, that's good. Before we go ahead and test out that shift light too, I wanna add some air to the bead locks and then I'm gonna teach you all how to program it because you actually have to program it and hold it and stuff. So get this thing pumped up. I mentioned earlier there's a specific set of instructions for programming this holly sniper shift light so what you need to do is actually cycle through the modes and i'll explain it real quick so i'm just going to read them because it's the simplest way to put it forward select the prg program which is obviously the program menu and hold the button for two seconds drive the vehicle in first gear at a steady speed quick press a button leds will blink to indicate first gear ratio is saved and then you're going to repeat the same thing so what that means is that you're gonna open up the Holly thing and you're going to, I think I might have to turn on the car actually so it actually shows. All right, so obviously right now it's showing my RPM. This is how you access the menu by clicking on the right button closest to the wire. You're gonna go to program, which is all the way at the end, right there. You're gonna click into this and then it's going to give you the option to set each speed for first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear. Obviously because this is a six speed car. So you need to have somebody sit in the passenger seat and hold this while you're hitting the program in that menu. And basically it'll set and learn the gear ratios for the car. Once you do that, right, you can go in here and I'll show you guys this in just a second. This cycles it, the, left, uh, the right button, but you can go into here, hold down on the left hand side, and then you can set how many RPMs you want it to shift at. So right now I am going up to 8,000 RPM for first gear, and I'm gonna do the same thing for every gear. We're gonna go all the way to 8K. You can kind of hold it down right here and it'll jump faster, I didn't know that. I thought you had to tap through it. But we're gonna go all the way up to 8,000 RPM. That's where I wanna shift that. That's where my aftermarket tuning is setting it to, so we're getting close. Should be there pretty soon. And one more second, there we go. So I'm gonna set all of these to 8,000 RPM. It's the same thing. I can show the process one more time just to clarify it. We're gonna do the same thing again one more time. So let's go speed two for second gear. Hold down, one second. Hold down on the left button away from the wire. It's set at 2,000 RPM right now. Let's jump that up to 8K one more time. But you do have to drive the car before you do this in program mode so that it learns each gear ratio for each gear. There you go, 8,000 RPM. You're gonna basically just let it sit there. I forgot for a second and watch what happens. It'll go back to reading your normal RPM. This is the first time we're gonna try out this shift light here on to show it. What, the shift light? Yeah. Oh, we can definitely try it here. Ready? Yeah. I hope I hook. I hit the limiter. Why? Oh, it's disconnected. We're so dumb. What? Oh the my god! Disconnected I was the waiting on the light. Bruh. <laughs> I was waiting on the light to go off. I wasn't looking at the RPMs. And we just banged the limiter. Bro, we're actually brain dead. <laughs> we 
the log. All right, how does the log look? And then we'll try that again. It was completely fine. Um, no positive knock. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that, bro. Is that a cop behind me, though? I can't tell. trying to figure out what's going on with the car i think i'm hitting the factory red line that's 7500 rpm that it's cutting out right yeah and then it knocks but i that's think not a real knock yeah okay can you go to the uh the fuel pump pressure oh right here hold up let me do when you're actually doing the pull yeah like on throttle all right so that's basically on actual throttle. yeah like the pressure it's is fine basically dude fine. I'm on, i might be on the wrong tune <laughs> yeah i would i would reflash it on and causing the car to cut out on me. On the side of the highway but we think it's the clutch it's not the traction control i mean we have it completely unplugged and we're still having the same issue gino's getting mad but if you guys recall i went to the track with jay and i hit third gear right and when i hit third gear i blew up the clutch like a cloud of smoke came out we smelled clutch and it might just be giving out now so we're gonna test it out and see uh we're gonna do a test in six gear rev it out See if the RPMs increase and the wheel speed mile per hour doesn't increase at the same time. Uh, we'll see if the clutch is done for. I thought it was driving pretty weird too. Get a Florida in six to see if the clutch is slipping now. Yeah, go. Bro, it slips when the RPM starts spiking and the miles an hour stop moving. Look for it right now. The miles an hour are gonna move and it's gonna go up proportionally. Get it real quick. What's going on with this car no clue we're gonna send the log to the tuner you guys get the idea of the shift light though we can show it revving up at idle all right it was it was supposed to be a fun little install but of course there's always something going wrong so i have it set to 2000 rpm rev up for launch or i guess it doesn't want to do it anymore all right, I'll reprogram it in real quick. Or it's not plugged in. Great, big brain, big brain. All right, now we can actually show it flashing. It's 
that's how it flashes in your face when you need to shift. And if you're sitting here, this is what it looks like as a driver. So pretty cool. Definitely useful. No longer have to look at the tack. But again, I didn't get to properly test it because the car just said, you know what? I'm gonna start giving you problems randomly. And I wonder if it has anything to do with uh, the fact that the headlights are hyper flashing. Maybe there's like an incomplete circuit to one of the wheel speed sensors up there or something, I don't know. I mean, the shift light is nothing complex in setting it up. I taught you guys how to do that. I will also link the, what is it? The, um, the instruction manual in the actual description of this video. So the tutorial is gonna be clear cut. It takes you about 10 minutes to set up and I recommend having a gyno with you to sit there and program it while you drive it for the first time and then you'll have it perfectly and then just tuck the wires and have everything set away it plugs into the OBD port simple as that picking up that shift light vlog I know exactly what's wrong with Sally and it has to do with the freaking fuel system again so every time we would hit around 5,000 rpm the car would stutter and cut out like the traction control would turn on well why is that because we were losing fuel pressure and the ECU did not want to blow the motor sky high. I actually got very lucky that the motor didn't blow up on any of those pulls. But anyways, the reason why it didn't blow is because I got lucky. So we lost all fuel pressure. I took out the relays to the fuel system. Last time it was the fuse, remember? This time it's the relays apparently. So we definitely have an issue with the wires. Like, I don't know what's going on with the wires in this car for the fuel system, but it's causing the fuses to blow out, the relays to blow out now, and I'll show you all what it looked like in just a second. So that's why the car was not pulling through, and we thought it was a traction control issue, because I was like, no way, I corrected the problem with this car's fuel system last time, no way it randomly broke again. So take a look at this relay, okay? It looks fine right now. All right, let me get some light on it, actually. Lighting's not the best. Uh, let me try and put this down and then flash the light on it. Point is, is if it focuses, you can see exactly where the relay burned out. So not only is that a fire hazard, but I mean, what is going on? That's about to blow my motor up. If this keeps happening, it's gonna blow the motor up. So I'm gonna send the car to Jay when I take the marrow up there to get cammed and all that, cause he's gonna do the work and he's gonna figure out why this freaking fuel system is having an issue with the wires. Like I can't emphasize this enough, but the wiring is super simple for this fuel system. So it literally runs off of the battery if we get this open and like there's no shot I messed this up. Like how does that make sense? Those are the two plugs right there where the two uh, rings that go on top of the battery and then it goes straight back to the fuel hats. There's no way that that could be messed up. There's something actually physically wrong with the wires. It may be entirely possible that there are some electricians that follow me. So you guys need to shoot me some tips as to what I can fix here with these wires. Because what I showed in the engine bay with the battery is the same wire. And it has fuses before this relay box right here. And then as you can see, my ground kind of got burned out. Get some E85 real quick. I'm at the pump. But I'm also going to have to put air in the bead locks. I took them to a performance shop to get mounted and get the beads seated and everything with the Mickey Thompson Street R. And guess what? They're leaking air. So like every two days that I have them on, I'll be driving and the car starts wobbling and then I'll check the tire pressure and it'll literally have like 10 PSI. So I don't think they seated the bead correctly or torqued down the bead locks to spec or I don't know. They're leaking air. There's something wrong with that. But I wanted to ask if there are any electricians in my comment section that can help me figure out this issue with the fuel system, wiring, and electrical aspect of it because I am not good at that. I'm gonna pop a new relay in here, but that's not gonna solve the issue that causes uh, these fuses and relays to blow out. So I can replace the relay, but that's not gonna solve the problem that's causing it. And I need a solid answer before I take the car to Jay because I'm not trying to have the same thing happen or I just won't go what until Jay looks at it and fixes it for sure. Time for you to drink up, Sally, and then I'm gonna head to Walmart to get a new relay. The car's looking good. I just wish that it would work, you know? 100%. And I know Jay will get me right so that I never have an issue again. But this is ridiculous, man. I just wanna I just wanna use the car. And then here's another update on the car and the Mach 1 bumper. Body shop guy is not talking to me right now, so I have no clue when I'm gonna get it back. I mean, I don't even want him to assemble it anymore because it's just taking way too long. I just wanna get it over with. So I know paint does not take that long to do. And I don't know, I gotta have a talk with him tomorrow or something before I leave for Christmas break. Cause this is getting ridiculous at this point. This car is actually kind of getting on my nerves. 
along with the Camaro now too. God, man, I can't say that I would have the car get on my nerves if it was stock, but then the car would be boring. I guess it's those few moments of joy that you get out of it that make it worth it. All right, let's read the tire PSI on this one because the other one was fine. It was at 32. It's actually not low. That's weird. What's causing that bounce? Well, there's my issue right there. You guys hear that? I don't know if you can hear it over the music, but that's a leaky valve stem. No matter how tight I put it, it's leaking. Literally pulling up to Walmart right now to get this replacement fuse, or I meant relay. And we'll see. Hopefully they have it because it is an automotive one, and that does not look open. It's only that door? It closed at 11, so you might want to hurry up. Oh crap! Yeah, because I'm trying to get a relay yeah. for the oh, for the for the Mustang. The fuel system, bro. It keeps shorting out the I fuel system. I can take system. a picture of this, bro. My yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. So that's me on Instagram. I'll post it, bro. You, bro. All right, I'm gonna hop in before they close. Okay, so I get I'm, this gonna I'm gonna just turn to your car. Ben, I'll, ben, I'll talk to you. What up? <laughs> of course they don't have it. That's fantastic. All right, I guess I gotta go to advanced tomorrow because everything's closed now. Awake for way too long. That header install took me 12 hours on that. Camaro. I wanna do headers on this, too, but. Picking up the vlog, I spoke to Jay, and sorry for the lack of good angles here. Halfway sticking out of the car, but he told me to move the ground from this bolt to the bolt on the right, which I just did, and I ratcheted it down. The bolt is on there super tight, and now the ground has been moved over. So I'm gonna try and get the camera to focus. Sometimes it doesn't want to, but as you can see, the two black wires are now running to this black bolt. And now I can head to Advanced Auto Parts and get a new relay. Let's go get this freaking relay. And then hopefully that ground solved the issue, but I'm still gonna have Jay check it out when I take the Camaro up there, just to get that extra reassurance. Cause I'm not trying to do a pool again and then lean the car out like that and run out of fuel. That is just totally moronic and asking for something bad to happen. Got that brand new relay in from AutoZone? Yeah, I thought I was gonna have to go to Advance because they couldn't find it for a while, but they pulled in clutch. So, I'm gonna pop it in, and I don't know what else we're gonna do for this vlog. I'm leaving for vacation, like literally tomorrow, so there's not much else I can do. Maybe I wanna cut the diffuser. I don't know, we'll keep it updated though. If I do something else, we'll include it in the video. Actually ended up fixing the fuel system. I'll explain it later, but we can probably do some shift light pulls, finally. We're just gonna make sure everything looks good on the log. It was already good on the test hit we did earlier. I just wanna double check and make sure so the motor doesn't go kaboom. I'm watching the fuel pressure religiously. Wait, slow down here. 
do another one. Nah, not when the car is coming. I'm telling you, this car scares me. Every time I drive it, I get scared. You gotta respect this thing. There's some followers here. Hold up. Pull up next up. Oh, they had the window closed this time. truck this is painful you're joking bro you're joking look at this bro <laughs> i didn't i wasn't late on the ship it just blew the belt off and then it red line damn i wonder what that run was it probably was spicy <laughs> oh my god too much boost the boost weather bro it Rip. spun the it spun the thing so fast that it just blew the belt off i think i might have a spare belt I might have a spare belt. Yeah. Hey, bro, that was good though that I saw the battery light. I shut the motor yeah. off immediately. I can't believe we just blew the belt off. <laughs> the comment section, the fuck going back in the shop. <laughs> no, nah, I think I have a belt. No, we're so lucky. I had a oh spare belt. Oh my belt. god. Hey, Yo, hey you, nah, nah, nah. you gotta give the oversight. <laughs> you gotta give the oversight though. How the did you have them? Because I, it was always a thought in my mind, what if I blow up the belt? God damn. <laughs> yeah, we got the new belt on. We had to grind it out. I put the camera down. Yeah, it's good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Some of the old belt is still in there. That's why it sounded like that. All right, stop, stop, stop.
we're screwed. But I mean, we're holding oil pressure right now. Wouldn't we hear a rod knock right now? Yeah, you would. If there was something wrong with the car, you would probably hear it in the cabin. Well, this has been one crazy video. At least we got some pools though. And I'm gonna leave the car at the body shop. We're at Vinny's now. Uh, we're dropping it here. I'm going on Christmas vacation. And then I'll come back and have a new bumper and hopefully not a blown motor. <laughs> I think it's fine though. It was pulling like a mother. So the only way to like appropriately test a motor is to push it to the limit right after you think you blow it up. And it seemed to be okay. So, you know, you can't, I'm not in the clear yet because some people do this type of stuff. They have that issue. And then the motor turns out to be blown like a week or two later after you drive a couple hundred miles. But let's keep our fingers crossed that I'm good. And yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to add here. It sounds fun. So on that note, if you guys enjoyed the video, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.